sports because you're always working on improving your game. Yeah. Like you just respect the game so much, you know that it's gonna be ups and downs and anywhere in between. And you look at little goals that you wanna accomplish, but this is the thing with the athlete, you just can't stop. <laughs> like you're never satisfied until you actually perfect as much as you can perfect. Absolutely. So I think that relates a lot to entrepreneurship, which is why if you're in an athlete background at all, you would be best at this industry. It, all the principles apply, especially that mental toughness. Most times people think competition is I'm competing against somebody else. No, the internal competition you fight with with yourself is beating your prior best. Everybody else is just extras in that story. So when you see people doing better and doing better, what you're really upset about is the fact that they're beating their prior best and you still haven't beat your prior best. So if you focus on that mentality and make that all that you focus on, you're only gonna get better. Sold out service, and you know we've been working. We serving, we earning. The watches, it's hurting. Big heart, but it started with Chris. Seen a lot when it comes to this biz. Don't serve, don't earn. They gotta shift keys to be a capitalist. How's it going guys? Chris Hart here, Sold Out Serving here, and we're actually outside of National Park here in Washington, D.C. Today we're in for a treat. I have a guest on today's show. Um, she is a Paula. She's a board counsel with PHP Agency, chairman of the board of the entire company, and she, we're in front of this park here, right? So we're, 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 all, we're both ex-athletes. Um, we played ball back in the day, uh, a little college, college ball, football, you played softball. Softball, yeah. And uh, today we're gonna be discussing a little bit about the correlation between being an athlete, right? And, and also entrepreneurship and how we how we draw correlations between professional sports and, and really playing our game now of, of being a business owner. I think it would be fair to say that this business is for anybody who's an athlete that's frustrated. Yeah, seriously, right, seriously. So give us about your background. Prior to being in business for yourself, um, played some ball, where'd you go to school at? I went to school at the University of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, that's oh, right. The best time, I had the best time there. I played sports, I really got instilled the, the teamwork dynamic. Um, and then once I graduated with a degree in finance and marketing, I entered the workforce. Nice. And then lo and behold, I ran into a tall, uh, dark and handsome, beautiful man called Matt Zappala, and he led me into this industry. Here Money's for our guys, Santa Fe yeah. Squad. Give him a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> give, give him a follow, give him a subscribe for sure. <laughs> That's her husband. So, so she, I mean, I, what, what I noticed is that hey, in the years of working with you and in business, um, how would you connect the dots between, okay, being in sports, and I think sometimes it's like sports, like, you, you played in softball, right, as a, as a kid, so you, you came with the ranks, right? right. From, from, uh, where did you start playing ball? First, Probably first. five, six years old. Okay, so you've been playing for quite some time. You played for quite some time. I, 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 I've seen it in business myself. Um, I played college football, played high school football. Um, there are times that you want to quit in sports. There's times you have to learn new skill. How do you connect the dots between learning a skill in business and learning a skill in sports? Uh, I, this is why I love sports, because you're always working on improving your game. Yeah. Like you just respect the game so much, you know that it's gonna be ups and downs and anywhere in between. And you look at little goals that you wanna accomplish, but this is the thing with the athlete, you just can't stop. <laughs> like you're never satisfied until you actually perfect as much as you can perfect. Absolutely. So I think that relates a lot to entrepreneurship, which is why if you're in an athlete background at all, you would be best at this industry. It, all the principles apply, especially that mental toughness that you need to have here. That's so big, that's so big. I read a book called The Inner Game of Tennis. It talks about the mental capacity of sports. And it's crazy how, like some of the, the top performers in sports, whether the, 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 the Michael Jordan is, the LeBron James, the Kobe Bryant. If you read the book by Tim Grover, oh yeah, um, um, uh, what's the, the book of Tim Grover? It's um, Winning. Winning. Yeah, win, Winning. His most recent one, Winning, right? And he talks about Kobe Bryant's mindset. And so, so for me, when, when it comes to being an athlete, being an entrepreneur, I think, I think your husband uh, coined that phrase, entrepreneur, Entre athlete, Entre athlete right? It was good. And, and so, so I know he, he's big on fitness, working out, getting in shape, and be, doing certain things to stay in shape, not only for himself physically, but to stay, have energy in, in business. How, what, what have you seen with you and your husband, and your business around energy, around energy, and managing your energy over time? Oh, uh, I mean. Energy comes from within, I uh -huh. guess is the best way to start. So yep. how do you fix those things, mental, spiritual, emotional, um, but they all stem also from your physical. Yep. So if, if you feel good and you look good, then you do good and you do good. So if people would focus on the inside of them, because you know, the, the, the worst thing is when bad things happen, people naturally go towards negative, yep. right? Yep. But that's Absolutely. all stemming from some subconscious way of how you process and think about things. But an athlete knows that the minute you start thinking like that, you gotta train your brain to stop and go back to positive. Absolutely, So Absolutely. you can't do that on the external side, you can't do that on the internal side as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I asked this question. So if someone's watching this now, right? They see you as a badass entrepreneur, right? All this good stuff here, they, they see it, but, People don't realize that you're you're a mom. Yes. You're a wife. Mm -hmm. 
So we see you as like a, that's like the triple on the board, like she and so Paula doing the hammer down, down right? <laughs> so, so how do you balance, integrate being a mother, being a wife, being a business owner, owning a business, running a national business across the entire country? Yeah. How do you manage all that? I mean, at the end of the day, as a parent in general, not just a mom, uh, you're supposed to train your kids on be the best you can be, yeah. reach your full capacity. But I'm not singular and defined by just being a mom. I want to be an example to my kids. And I'll tell you this right now, you just need help. That's all, you need yeah. help. So the bigger we got, the more I realized I need more people helping me. Uh, run errands, do the, the grocery shopping, the cooking, the laundry. And what that allowed me to do was focus on being a mom example mm. and showing my kids, I'm gonna show you how I go chase my dreams. But most people think it takes you away from your kids, it doesn't. You just have more control over planning your day. Wow. I can drop off my kids, I can pick them up, I can eat with them because I have more control and time on my side because I made this decision to do this. Wow, wow. So I deal with the key things is kind of outsourcing the things you don't have to do. Correct. Yeah. The things that don't really define you as a mom. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, no one wants me to cook, I'm just telling you. you don't want me to cook. <laughs> All so right. I outsource that. That amount of time, I then can go back and spend time with my kids. Now, there's some people that love cooking. I just don't yeah. love cooking. Yeah. There's other things you can apply that to. If you don't like to do the running of the errands, you don't do the grocery shopping or the dry clean, all these things, you can replace that and then focus more on being the mom. Most times people think competition is I'm competing against somebody else. No, the internal competition you fight with with yourself is beating your prior best. Everybody else is just extras in that story. So when you see people doing better and doing better, what you're really upset about is the fact that they're beating their prior best and you still haven't beat your prior best. So if you focus on that mentality and make that all that you focus on, then you're only gonna get better. You're only gonna get better. So guys, in closing, if you're someone saying, man, I'm, in, I'm an entrepreneur, I play sports, maybe you play high school ball, college ball, realize the correlation between competing in the sports world and competing in the business world. This is a young, a young lady who makes makes a multiple million dollars a year. Multiple million dollars, doing very well for her family, and doing a national business, but at the end of the day, she took the things she learned in sports and applied them to business. So if you're that person saying, man, I know that's me, apply yourself to whatever you're doing in life, whether it's a job, whether you're working in sales, but I believe that entrepreneur in this coming age or what's happening in our recession is your way out. So if you got value from today's video, guys, do not forget to follow us on the Instagram at Sold Out Servant and comment in the comment section below, guys, and subscribe to the channel here at Southern Earn.